Hey everybody, welcome to Brothers in Bourbon, the internet's first show dedicated to showing you where to get some good bourbon, where to drink some good bourbon, and how to take your drinking game up a level at home. We're here to make the mistakes so you don't have to. Before we get started, make sure to like and subscribe below. So today's an Nerdum episode, uh, we're going to talk about C2E2 2019. Yep, it was a couple of weeks ago, and uh, sorry, I've been out of town, you know, I'm working. Uh, and then con things happen. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, sorry about last week's episode, didn't have a chance to get that out, but we're making it now. Yep. Um, it's C2E2's 20th anniversary, 10-year anniversary. anniversary. It's 10-year anniversary, yes. Yeah, they're That's not that old yet, yep. but they'll be, be around for much longer. Mm -hmm. um, and it was great this year. Yeah, like, it was amazing. It wasn't nearly as crowded, which is great, mm -hmm. it just means that they had the flow just right. Right. So Pretty sure it's still their numbers because it was still absolutely packed at some points. Yeah, definitely. Um, it looks like they just keep taking up more and more space in McCormick Center every year. It's yeah. just getting larger and larger. Uh, so mm. yeah. I did what I could there. <laughs> uh, as you see with some of this uh, B-roll that we got going on here, it was a uh, it was fun, <laughs> a lot of fun. Oh, tons of fun. There was uh, Bluefin stepped it up this year for sure. They even had their own Gunpla booth next to their main uh, merchandise area. So like a, gosh, 12 foot, 15, because you're tall, you would know yeah. this. <laughs> 15 foot tall Gundam? It was at least 15. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we forgot to actually tell you guys about what we're actually drinking here today. Oh yeah, we have to do the drink and then talk. Yeah. So, <laughs> so what do we got here to taste? Because we're going to get into this discussion and talk, give you guys all the highlights that we saw there. But today we're drinking Widow Jane. Mm -hmm. Widow Jane Tenier. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. So this is actually a whiskey from New York, um, and if you talk to a New York person, their claim to fame for what makes all the food and drinks great is that they put the mineral water in there. Uh, Chicago's food's better. Fight me. I didn't want to do the pizza discussion. He went right there. Fight me. <laughs> <laughs> they have good pizza, but what is really good pizza isn't considered pizza, in my opinion. Pizza, it's pie. It's they have good pie. They have no pie is something that you have a dish. Like, and it has like a crust and everything. It's uh -huh. like, think about apple pie. You wouldn't want apple pie in the shape of the way New York style pizza is. Okay, fair. So let me rephrase. They have things that you don't consider to be real pizza that's really good. Right. Agreed. Yeah. So like artichoke pizza with crazy cheese sauces or not even cheese sauces, but it's amazing. It tastes good, but. Yeah, it tastes good. I'm not such pepperoni pizza. But. Or yeah. deep dish pizza. Yeah. So. Deep dish, that's us. We went there. Yeah. So back to the whiskey at hand. Right. <laughs> the mineral water here makes Why sense. Why we're here. <laughs> so to read the back of the bottle, because you may not be able to get it or see it. Um, reviving the lost art of marrying the finest whiskeys, Widow Jane Tenier is our signature bourbon. It's hand assembled in Brooklyn using the richest and rarest straight bourbons, only ever in five barrel batches, which is crazy and awesome. Uh, Non-chill filtered and proofed with our own mineral water. Mineral water from the legendary Rosendale Mines of New York. We deliver a whiskey unique in its intensity and complexity. Yeah. Nice. So it's really cool. Um, and I just want to point out the five barrel batches. That's awesome because that means they make like a very select batch of whiskey. Yeah. And that's it. I mean, if you follow their Instagram handle, it's like they only show like maybe a couple of these barrels at a time. <laughs> yeah, and that's all they do. Yeah. <laughs> it's very handcrafted there. Yeah. Very artistic. And control. And control, yeah. very. Nice. So, should we crack this open? Yes. As always, please do the honors. Da -da -da. Be roll with me, just <laughs> trying to open this up. One of these days, I'm just going to struggle. It's going to be bad. <laughs> you have struggled on a couple of them, like that journeyman. Oh, man. Because there's wax on there. How are you supposed to do wax without any tools? Strength. That's why we're in the gym. Just rip it off. Yeah, for a point. <laughs> like me, like an animal. <laughs> okay, cool. Right. So cheers. Cheers. Hmm. So, what you think? Smell first. Hmm. That has a distinct whiskey smell. Like it, it tastes like the like it has like an ethanol type of smell to it to me. Yeah. Um, but on the flavor side, it's just straight up whiskey. Like, yeah. <laughs> you, 
you know you're drinking whiskey when you drink that. <laughs> yeah. She's smooth, a little bit of punch at the end, but definitely smooth. Uh, I'm not really getting any of the flavor notes on it, though. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe if I add a little splash of water, open it up a little bit. But for me, that just sounds like, it, it tastes like a compact whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> and that's like, what you do sometimes. You just need, like, a whiskey. Like, mm -hmm. for me, the same thing. Smelling it was super light, but then underneath it, you still smelt that, like, this is ethanol, this is gasoline, this yeah. is whiskey, you're it's drinking alcohol. fire. Yeah, alcohol. <laughs> and then when you taste it, you get that immediate punch from like a good, strong bourbon or whiskey. Right. But it's not like that um, that cheap punch. It's an expensive punch. It's like, Yes, mm. for sure. Not the one that makes you cough and want to like grab your heart. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Burn your soul, you know? <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, you're right. I'm not cough, tasting cough, any... Some of those. <laughs> we have to do another, another uh, barrel cast soon. Yes. Yes, we have to do one of those. Like maybe, is there a 200 proof one? No. You sure? No. <laughs> we'll find it. But anyway, you'll do that on your own. I'll <laughs> on watch it just film. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just have him and Patrick on the side. <laughs> but yeah, I'm not tasting like any like strong flavors there. Okay. So in that case, I kind of want to give this a shot and maybe uh, toss a little ice on here and see what happens. Maybe a little bit of water. All so, right, cool. Uh, I'll be right back, guys. And I'm back. Cool. <laughs> So, uh, gonna get that, let that bump for a second, mm -hmm. you know, since it's just fresh in there. Uh, while I let that bump, why don't you tell us a little bit more about it, since you do all of our thermo uh, fluid dynamics. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm working tonight. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so this being a small batch uh, whiskey, there's mm -hmm. gonna be actually the numbers on the, on the bottle of like what barrel came from, how, what's its run number, etc. So this one's actually um, batch number 43, and bottle of that, bottle five, 455. So that's relatively young. Yeah. Yeah, got one of the first ones. Yep, date was, and actually this school has a date on there, it was 2018. Nice. Like it's, obviously it's gonna be on there, but it's not hidden like on some bottles. Yeah. Um, and so you guys all know this is 45.5% alcohol and of course 90% proof. Cause you just double those numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's not gonna burn your chest, but it's still gonna, you're still gonna get the effect. Nice. So I let this uh, sit a little bit and let me see how it tastes now. Being the thermodynamics guy, she'd definitely be different and more towards your taste palette. I like it both ways. This one I'm tasting a little bit more, like not vanilla, but maybe caramel. It's a little bit more caramel taste. Okay. Uh, I suggest you try it, but. <laughs> it doesn't sound very Widow Janie, you know? Yeah. Has the name. It's like a, she's a, a she's villain, strong. A, a superhero from a DC comic. She's an angry stepmother, or the evil stepmother, you know? <laughs> so, all right. So, uh, that's our whiskey review there. Mm -hmm. um, you did come from the Nerdum episode, so let's, let's talk about it. the C2E2. So, yeah. so, roll the B-roll. B-roll. <laughs> so, so here, we're here for the 10-year ten, ten anniversary of C2E2. Um, it's epic. It's big this year. Tons of great attractions. It looks awesome. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to stop here. There's a 15-foot Gundam. A 15-foot Gundam. I can't. It's just that I love Gundams. <laughs> <laughs> and they actually had like a gun plus station there. Um, so, people who aren't familiar with with Gunblow or Gundams. Gundams are giant Japanese, it's a franchise of giant Japanese fighting robots. Mm -hmm. And Gunpla is Gundam play where you actually buy a resin kit that comes on runners, you actually cut all the different pieces and you like legit engineering style build the Gundam. And they come in all different shapes and sizes from as small as like two inches to as big as like a 16 inch perfect grade Gundam. So, because I'm on the computer all day, my favorite thing is to sit down, do stuff with my hands, mm -hmm. and build something that takes way too much time and effort than it should. Hmm. My favorite thing to do is uh, make the show afterwards. <laughs> 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 but yeah, um, so I did enjoy the Gundam booth. Uh, yeah. There's so much going on. Like the art, like Artist Alley was amazing. Was amazing Definitely picked up a whole bunch of artists, there, uh, a whole bunch of artwork um, for legal reasons. I'm not going to show it because I don't know who owns the rights. You know, they got fan art, you got actual artists, and then 
Disney don't come after me. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Disney, Marvel, DC, all you guys, Fox. <laughs> Wait, aren't they all the same now? Except for Ooh, DC. Oh yeah. Except for DC. Yeah. Um. Mm. So, interesting fact. Since this is the Nerdum Nerdum episode, uh, C22 is still one of those cons that can have fan art. Really? Yeah. Uh, a lot of the cons the past couple of years have been being shut down in their arts alley f and not allowing fan art at all. Hmm. Which was a huge thing because, like, most of these art, a lot of the artists that go to art to cons, mm -hmm. their whole like, their whole portfolio of, of which they sell from is just like Overwatch characters, Disney characters, Kingdom Hearts, Gundams, etc. And mm -hmm. then they're not allowed to do anything. They have to come out with original artwork or shut down their whole backlog of art. But C2E2 uh, had it all. It was great. Yeah, these, this legal <laughs> system, man. Jeez. And then got EUCD coming out. And I'm like, that's going to change the way the internet's oh, done? Man. Everything. Uh, yeah. Net neutrality on top of that? Mm. <laughs> Too deep. Yeah. Not for this. We're here for lighthearted <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah, so after the Gundam boo. <laughs> <laughs> Back on the fun stuff. Yeah, Tokidoki was there. Adults would have a great booth. Mm-hmm. Definitely not kid friendly at all. <laughs> no. <laughs> Your pretty face is going to hell. It's their new episode, it's their new TV sh series that's coming out, mm. and they basically painted you like a red faced demon for free and gave you horns. Yeah, I'm oh. not going to talk about what, what was on the backside of the booth. You guys can see that in the video or Google it. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think I had that on the video. <laughs> Good. All right. Cool. <laughs> I had the kids with me on the first day, so. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. And yeah, they walked right past. Gonna go. Gonna go buy it. <laughs> and avoid that whole area. Oh man. But, yeah. Uh, uh, so what else did we see there? Um, they had. They definitely expanded out their esports section. Mm -hmm. I remember DePaul or any school having like a dedicated like row of. Uh, gaming computers, which is nice. Yeah, um, my, they even had little games like uh, my son was playing uh, Capcom. Uh, was it? No, he's playing Street Fighter. Oh, nice. Yeah, he found a uh, Street Fighter out there, and it, he was just he won the first round against the older kid. What? Yeah, button mashed the crap out of it, but yeah, Good. he won. <laughs> my four year old was kicking ass. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> which is super rare because anyone that plays at a con is just dumb good, insanely good. good. Yeah, it makes no sense. Yeah, but yeah. I felt proud. I was like, yeah, he, he did that. Yep. And he was using jacks. <laughs> what? He used jacks. He just sat down and started playing. He was like, bam, 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 Just Destroyed. pressed all the buttons. He, he was one of these, but he made it. <laughs> Give him a game pad. I mean, he plays with Kieran all the time, so. Oh, that's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, that'll do it. But um, I mean, an arcade stick is way different than a controller. Yeah. So. Hmm. I think he has his calling there. <laughs> to Ace and okay. we go. <laughs> <laughs> gotta get an arcade stick now. Ah. Yeah. Um, no, after that, there was actually, um, which was really cool to see this year, which is something they've always been missing. They actually had a, uh, an actual standing arcade section, mm -hmm. um, which was awesome. It had all the Japanese arcade games with a couple other ones. So you had like the brand new Tekken, the brand new Gundam game, Gundam Driver. I think it's called Gundam Driver. Don't quote me on that. Um, I don't know. Pokemon tournament, of course, <laughs> and of course the cool like. It's a I can't I have to look it up. Just weird like hand rhythm games. Oh, hand rhythm games. Hand rhythm games. Yeah, we're gonna go with hand rhythm games. Now. Hand rhythm games. Yeah. Hand rhythm games. <laughs> you go to these cons, you'll find it. You'll know it's a big cube and it's a hand rhythm game. I saw that one. I was Easy. like, what is that? It's like Dance Dance Revolution, but with your hands. It's so much fun, and you just spend hours playing it. Yeah. Yeah. It's also called Simon. If for it all these guys older Simon. generations <laughs> that grew up with Simon. <laughs> it's a semi derivative work of Simon. <laughs> it's like Simon on steroids. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course there's Piamu Piamu and Sandstorm on there. You get the best of both worlds. <laughs> no idea who that is, but okay. <laughs> you know Sandstorm though. I know Sandstorm. Derib okay, yes. cool. Do know Sandstorm. Yeah, we'll get you hooked on the Piamu Piamu and Okay. Karen soon. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so visually in our heads, we're going straight through the main area, all the way to the back. What's the and right? As you see on the video, yeah, I'm trying to go straight through the main area. <laughs> <laughs> on the right sorry side. for the B-roll again for the same clip that I probably already clipped in here before. <laughs> eh, entertainment, that's what we do. Right. <laughs> so on the right side of the con floor. I don't know if there'd be anything There's like super... Artist Alley was on the right hand side. Yes. Um, along with the kids section, mm -hmm. uh, where 
like they had all the, stor the stormtroopers that were yeah. there. That uh, oh, the I guess they robots, so cool. R two D the robot uh, the ro um, the remote control R two D two robot that yes. just runs around looks just like R two D two. Yeah. So check this out. They actually make there's a there's a a group or a club. Mm -hmm. Not sure what the official term of it is. I believe they call themselves uh, a regiment. Regiment. Okay, cool. Yes. There's an actual regiment <laughs> in the Midwest that actually builds fully working R2-D2 droids. Mm -hmm. I mean, these things are like this tall, four feet tall, fully automated and everything. Yes. Yeah. It, it's amazing. And it's like, they, it just goes around, plays with the kids, uh -huh. rides around the floor everywhere. Yeah. Uh, and they said that they're like worldwide. So mm -hmm. they probably, uh, I heard that they're at every con. There, what if yeah. there's a con, they're there. They show up. And they <laughs> go hard. <laughs> yeah. All their costumes look like they just ripped it straight from the uh, set of Star Wars. Mm -hmm. Now, is that mm -hmm. five, 501st uh, Legion? Yes. Okay, cool. I think it's, uh, I have their yeah. cards over there on the table. We will so. have to look this up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you have like the full on 501st Legion, which is full, which is a charity group. Mm-hmm. Purely for Star Wars, and their costumes are always on point. Yes. Always on point. And then you have the other side of it where they actually build the R2-D2 droids and have those run around and everything, which is nice. Nice. Yeah, because... Oh, someone's going to shoot us for this. Um, R2-D2, you can color it any different type of way, and it's... I'm going to shoot you for that. <laughs> I don't know what the other names are. <laughs> well, I don't know the names either, but I know that they're different. It's the that's droidism. Okay, the the droidist. base the the droid. <laughs> you're droidus. <laughs> you're racist against droids. Yeah, they all look the same. Yeah. <laughs> you take the genetic code and change a couple of things. They don't have genetics. genetics. <laughs> <laughs> the base model of, of R2D2, mm -hmm. you can color it many different ways and add different functionality to it and still have the same outer shell. It's like the perfect base model where you can still go big and go home or go big and totally fell at it and be basic but yeah it's a cool model that you can just do all these cool different things with so why not yeah i mean all it is is a upside down trash can with the dome on top and some uh, sticks for legs so isn't that r5 no it's a clove wash uh, wash and clove machine <laughs> no r5 i don't you know r5 meteor man Dude, no. I haven't seen Meteor Man since no. the 90s. come on. Since the 90s. You have to watch it again. I know, I gotta get it back. You've seen Coming to America. Yeah, since several then. times. Yeah. Yeah, you've seen Mystery Man since then. This is true. Mm. Yeah, no excuse. No excuse yeah, no here. Excuse. Come on. Ah, you're testing my knowledge <laughs> on this one. It's I'm, a Nerdum episode. Yeah, but I mean, I'm old now. I'm, you, uh, it's his birthday today. <laughs> yeah, I'm bringing a video to you on my birthday. <laughs> yeah, do what you love. Right. Usually, if you so for those who have never been gone to a con, you must go. Yeah. Um, the best cons to go to are your local comic cons, because um, I think there's a there's a big what's it called? There's a big stigma stigma around cons. Like it's it's Japanese only and it's too weird. All this stuff, right? Mm. Has that finally gone away? Yeah, I don't see that. I see. That con, like, I see the cons more or less like San Diego Comic Con. That's uh -huh. the only one. People don't even realize that there are other cons. That's the thing. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, <clears throat> most people don't know that there's other places besides San Diego in America. <laughs> yeah. So, let's start ground zero. There are conventions that aren't business related for mm -hmm. most of us. So, well, we, we show up as professionals. There are cons. I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Next year, we will. I don't plan to. <laughs> okay, so there are fun cons you can go to that aren't business related. Like, it's not like you're going there for work or anything. They're purely cons for entertainment. Mm -hmm. Right? And comic cons are explicitly made to be comic book, movie, and television related. Mm -hmm. What people are usually used to hearing about are the anime conventions, which are purely Japanese culture, anime, manga, movies, etc. There's been a lot of signal around that. And so it's like, I don't watch anything Japanese or anything, or I don't read it, I don't read any manga or anything like that. Yeah. Where do I start? Comic-Cons. Comic-Cons used to be purely American related, but now they're, they've broadened their reach and now like all the big people show up. Mm -hmm. Adult Swim, Toki Doki. I mean, Adult Swim has like, isn't purely. Yeah. Adult American. Swim is Adult Swim. It's Adult Swim, yeah. <laughs> they so, have their own class. Yes. <clears throat> Anywhere Adult Swim shows up, 
be ready. It's going to be awesome. Yes. Uh, so Adult Swim shows up, Tokidoki. Bluefin is now there. That's the main distributor for all Japanese toys. Mm -hmm. If you buy anything in the U.S., that's like a Gundam, uh, Gundam, Dragon Ball Z, anything big on TV right now. The Black Panther figu figurines are super articulate. Those are Japanese made. They, they buy them, they bring them in, and then everyone else buys them from them. So nice. you got the big dog showing up now at these big Comic Cons. Mm -hmm. So so they were there at C two E two, yeah. And that's another thing. Like Comic Con is different than C two E two. Like we have our own yes. Chicago Comic Con out in Rosemont, but I mean that's by the airport. Who wants to stay at the airport Ramada? Okay, so two things wrong with that. Or the Holiday Inn Express by the airport. <laughs> <laughs> the convention, ASEN, or, or they're at the Renaissance. Airport? They they were at the Renaissance Convention Center uh, when I went. Interesting. Okay, so always look up your local comic cons because they're everywhere. Like I didn't know that was a thing, and I've been going for the past twenty plus years. I have the badges to prove it. It's scary. Yeah. So there's comic cons everywhere. There's like, of course, Chicago, O'Hare, Rosemont. Mm -hmm. There's some in St. Charles. I'm trying to think of other places that people would know of. Milwaukee, San Diego, of course, Atlanta, mm -hmm. New York. Everywhere. And everywhere. Everybody. Um, Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, no, I'm kidding. Just small. <laughs> we love Lexington. Yeah, we love Lexington. We and they have an it. awesome con down there. <laughs> so, uh, is there anything else we want to hit about uh, the Comic Con? Hmm. Go find yours. Mm -hmm. Go to a con. It's worth it. It's fun. Um, and you get like exclusive t shirts and stuff like this. Yes, or <laughs> this. Yeah, people need to see this. Look at this. It's freaking awesome. Um, <laughs> All I'm saying is get your shit together. Wait. Shirt together. Get your... Nope. <laughs> hashtag exclamation part T. All right. We're done here. Yeah, we're done here. <laughs> I had one. It's on my birthday, so it's like, all right, I'm already drunk. No. Yeah. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, uh, anyway. Shout out to Moo Moo Cosplay. Yeah, that is sick, man. Nice little yeah. It's soft, too, but I'm not going to let you touch it. Get your own. I'm good. Will you touch me, though? <laughs> I'm going to read the shirt first. <laughs> We're done here. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks. Cool. Appreciate your time. Thanks. Cheers. See you. Cheers. Bye.